I'm Tim. I'm Anna. This is the Geek Tech Game Review Group. We're going to bring you guys a review of... Student Bodies. It's a Spark and Dagger... Published? Published by Spark and Daggers. It's an Angry Duck Games. And Games. distributed by Spark and Dagger. Yeah. Yeah, but Angry Duck Games is the creator. Um, I don't the, know much like about them, but yeah. I like what they have. <clears throat> yeah, check out their uh, webpage. Well, you can check out their Twitter and then I'll link you to their webpage at Angry Ducks. Angry Duck Games. Uh, is our Twitter handle. Uh, for Smirk and Dagger, it's at Smirk and Dagger. Uh, Kurt Cover. Kurt Covert. Covert. Yeah, I didn't say the t, -t on the end of that cover. <laughs> so, uh, let's go ahead and head over to the box, show you guys the components inside, and uh, then we'll show you guys how to play and give you our thoughts on the end. Alright guys, so we have this awesome box of awesome. Uh, and it is a I just have to outrun you game of horror survival. Student Bodies by Smirk and Dagger Games presents an Angry Duck game. It is two to four players with the possibility of five in parentheses. Uh, Playtime about 90 minutes. H is 14 and up. And it is probably 14 and up because of the small pieces so they don't have to do the testing for small children. Jeez, that maybe also because of the children. and because of the graphic content, possible. Please. Okay, so we have the super fantastic zombie board. You will start here. Hit the go all the way down there for the antidote. Right here, so somewhere in there, and then you would run all the way back to the exit and go out. So that is the board. So let's go to the rule book. Oh, but I've got the rule book bent around because we were reading it. Jeez. Yeah, Here's we take care of our games. <laughs> cover. And then really, I read the rule book from front to back. It was really easy to understand and we were able to play from one read through. Probably because it was typed in English and that's the only language we know. <laughs> we, um, I also Just only kidding. had to refer to it maybe like twice during our playthrough, so it was pretty thorough. I'm not good at reading old books. We have obstacles in here. They're little hexagons. Um, so, oops. They have little things on the back of them. And then here's the student bodies, which is going to give you your actions, and it's going to give you Cards, your student body cards. fast actions. And I'm looking for a reaction. So a reaction is going to do pretty much uh, be a counter to when someone attacks you. An action is something you do on your turn to attack others or make things happen. Um, these are the zombie cards, and I will let Anna explain these those. These make the zombie deck. There's different levels. There's um, cards that have B. You have to separate them in the beginning. There's B levels. There are level ones, level twos, and level threes. Um, basic. There's ten basic cards, and those go into every deck of zombie every zombie deck of every game and then you can do you have to do 11 other cards to customize your game um, and they have hints in here um, to how to set that up um, we played on the beginner level last night and it was five level two cards six level two cards and five level three cards so no level one cards in there um, the level one cards look pretty easy um, and there, there was some pretty tough cards that we came across, but I was able. But it's really, it makes it really customizable, um, the game. So, and that gives it a lot of replay value. And then Tim here has. I have the item cards, which are going to be like your uh, weapons and things that are going to help you. you start with uh, one of those like per game. And big then bag of, big bag O dice, knock down all enemies within two spaces of you, which is awesome. And that, that includes enemies as in the players you are against. Everything is an enemy. Everyone you play against. The only person that's not an enemy is yourself. So to clarify, everyone is an enemy. Uh, there's five minute NRG. <laughs> you guys are funny. Uh, to trash, you trash can it as an action and you gain two stamina. And the other thing is, if you trash it as a fast action, you can gain two health tokens. Uh, so these are things that are going to help you. Weapons, uh, 
stuff you could drink, varsity jacket, stuff like that. It makes you gain stamina, stuff like that. Uh, lab 101 cards. Actually, I'm going to start with the hell hallway, because it's going to be the first thing you set up, because that's where you will start, is in the hallway. Uh, there are a few cards here. Do you know how many there are of this number? Mm -hmm. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. 14. Does that sound and right? You, you, yes. So you can you choose one of these randomly. No, you choose two randomly to oh, set up. Two randomly. One's one half of the hallway, one's the other half. Mm -hmm. Or they might be in the same half. So you pick two of these. I didn't read the rule book, Anna did. She set it all up. Um, and then when you flip it over, it's going to have diagrams. Uh, where you're gonna set what up so that would have three obstacles one zombie and a corpse token mm -hmm. So obviously that also gives it a lot of replay value because your yeah. hallway setup is not gonna be the right not gonna be the same at the beginning Well, it could be but yes, you know, like so while you're running through the two hallways two hallway cards Which are gonna be on your board, uh, which we'll show you that and how to set the game oh, up. Oh, okay. I got play. it. Okay. I was understanding Okay, I just understood something for the first time in the game. These are your, um, what's this called? Obstacle. Obstacle. But, you, they're switched over, because I didn't understand that if you went over it, if they, if they flipped over. They don't flip over. They, these are for setups. Yeah. Okay. I didn't understand that when so reading the book. That was the only thing I didn't understand, but we didn't come across it. So this, okay, mate, okay, makes more sense to me now. Go ahead. Got it. All right. <laughs> Usually we look through all the components, but there was a lot here, so we just kind of went with it when we played. Uh, this well, is Lab 101. I knew that they had those on the other side. I just didn't understand that if you went. I got you. So now we got it. Okay, so this is the Lab 101. So when you get to the lab, one of these cards will be in the lab waiting for you and you don't know what's in the lab until you open the door and then the card flips over and is this the one we actually played yesterday? I think it is. So you'll go in there and you'll see where all the antidotes are going to be or what you think is an antidote. Uh, so and then that will pop up like a setup. So it's like you walk through the door and then the level you know generates. And then you'll do that setup before anything happens. And then you'll go all the way back through the hallway, uh, which will be completely different than when you came through it the first time. Well, yeah, uh, just zombies because zombies are spawning. Yeah, and zombies move and um, <clears throat> zombies are dead. You know, maybe a corpse out there where somebody already died through the first half of the game. And then you have the exit card. So once you get to the second half, all the way back through the hallway, you because get to the exit, set of doors. go through the exit door, then you'll have one of these pop open, flip it over, then the level generates, and that's actually the one we played last night as well. So, so it's really cool that your, your setup is different every time, so you have a lot a lot of replayability in this game. Yeah, and you can always make the difficulty harder than what the rule book says, like you could put three exit cards in there if you wanted to. Hmm. <laughs> or you could do no I exit cards have enough and just have a freeway. You might not have enough zombies. Yeah, well, some of us will get creative and just print stuff off the See, you have line. to keep, when you set up the game, you have to keep um, four. four zombies set up for the the um, lab and then four set up for the exit, so. Yeah. Oopsies, forgot a hallway card. Um, did you already go through all this stuff? I have not, we haven't gone through any of it. Now here we've got all of our little tokens here. Um, there's corpse tokens. And those will have loot in them or bites in them, or they might be empty. Um, you can check them to try and get more items, but be careful. They might not be fully dead, um, and they might bite you, or it could be empty. Um, they might not have anything on them. And then you have your potions. These potion tokens they kind of rhyme. have... Potion, potion token. tokens potion have token, potion things token. on them, and usually they're bad unless you get the antidote and then that. I got every bad possible <laughs> before she got the potion antidote. yesterday before I could possibly get the antidote. Um, so this one sucked. I had to discard my entire hand, and I had a good hand. I was so excited. I had my plan. I was going to run out. I had a, a move four, and I had to discard it. And so that sucked. 
And then here we have, I'm not sure what the balls are for. I'm sure the balls, I didn't even, they didn't have that in the rule book. I'm sure it's probably played on the, one of the cards or something, an item or something. Yeah. That we didn't run into. But here's your health tokens. Once you get bit, it turns into a bite. Then there are corpse tokens. So if a player is turned into a smart zombie and their smart zombie player is killed, they're a corpse. And at that point, other players can loot their body for items. So, and then here's a lunchbox that's probably on some card text we didn't run into last night. Um, and these are your stamina markers. I'm guessing the items are probably going to trigger some of that stuff. Probably. That's what I would guess because we only had like three items come out. Total. Yeah, because I was... You only had one I was you avoiding, lost it. I was avoiding corpses that just didn't... Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I'm not even going to take a chance. And I did loot a corpse and I got an inhaler. Sometimes it's worth it because you have five hit tokens and I've noticed that I didn't get hit a lot last night. Yeah, October. and there's heal things in, your, in the student body's deck, but I mean yeah. if you get one... You get one if you don't. You kind of screwed if you wasted it on corpses. But okay. anyways, there's stamina tokens. Um, there's should be thirty of these so that you can um, track your stamina as you're playing. And then you want to go through those with them. Yeah, these are going to be your character sheets where you can track your stamina, uh, and then you're going to track your health here, and then you can keep a white a weapon or item, and you can only carry one weapon. Uh, and then two more items, and then here's your backpack uh, for additional items. And this is where you keep your antidote that you drank uh, when you get it. Uh, and then it, on each of these turn order cards, it'll show to ready all items. So you'll ready your items here. Then the zombies all do their action. You'll pull a zombies card, and it'll say everybody moves one, or all the zombies move one, or it'll say place one, make give it one action. Uh, or it could be a combination of both, uh, or it could be something completely we'll, crazy like all zombies get three actions. We'll do a couple turn playthrough so you can see it. Yeah, and then uh, then you'll do your action moving, then you'll do cleanup, and then current player may discard cards, which I did that a lot when I was a zombie because I had a lot of non-zombie action cards. Um, and then you can do uh, all players draw up to the hand size and then current player resets stamina so then you would go back to the three after using it. And then there's these little hallway things to set up for setup. Um, here's your lab door and fire doors. And there are five characters. Oh, here's a student body card. And then here are your zombies. You have your Dumb zombies, which are in the green. More. You have your smart zombies, which are the red. And then you have your players, which have the tan background. And they all have their own stands. Players have like colored stands. You switch the stand once you turn. And I forgot to show you the back side of the card, which is what's going to trigger smart zombies. When you die, you get the smart zombie side. So you only have two health markers. And you get your regular player um, moves and everything, but the cards, they have to have that symbol on the bottom, and then you can do the text there as a zombie. Uh, you don't get the regular stuff. So when you die, you'll be here, and then you die, and then you just flip your, flip your card over, and it'll all be right there. Um, and I'll let Anna continue on what was going on oh, with was the it. markers. Oh, you that was yeah, it. Yeah, I just said that each player has their own color, so once you switch, there's not two for every turn, so it might look like some of your people don't have um, stands, but what it is is you flip them when they turn. So, um, so there are your popular zombie kids, and then here are your loser players. And I think that's all components that we have here. Yeah, the only thing that I want to ask is, do you guys believe this game should be in the biology room or the chemistry room? Because it's biology as in the human anatomy and everything that's going on zombie-wise, yeah, but it's chemistry. chemistry as in the antidote. Hmm. I would say chemistry. <laughs> oh, you guys can leave a comment below and tell us what you think. <laughs> and before we leave here, I want to show you guys the back mm -hmm. of the box. And I was kind of, yesterday I kind of like had a moment where I was like, 
Why did they use such a big box with all the? There's not like. And then as I'm sliding the that board, that many in. components. And then he put the board, and I was like, oh, because it's a massive, massive okay. board. So basically, this is just showing all the components which we just went through. So showing the back was not like necessary. But if you're going to buy the game and want to see what it looks like in person, this is a very good. Um, diagram of what's going on in this. And it's actually the setup. Yes, and this picture right here is actual size. It says actual size. I was reading that yesterday. Um, I think what I like most about it is there's no gun, so you don't have any ranged attacks. Everything is melee. Yep, everything is melee. So you have to be right next to the zombies to even do anything. But you can push things. Well, you had a weapon, didn't you, that you could hit someone from four away, but it was a trash card. Yeah, but I think it's cool because they don't have, like, guns and molotovs and everything else. You're you would have exactly what a student would have inside of a school. Um, but anyways, we're going to go ahead and show you guys how to set the game up and uh, show you guys a couple turns on uh, how to play the game. Alright guys, so here's all the components laid out out of the box. We each have our player's card. I have chose Abigail. She has chosen Emily. We have our starting pool. The rest of them are still in the box. I just wanted to show you guys like a little stack. We have our doors for the map. We have our base, our level 1, 2, and 3 on our Zombie cards, we've got our Lab 101s, items, hallway setup, exit, and our student body cards. And then these are the uh, obstacles. obstacles that we showed you guys earlier. And then here's the pool of uh, different antidote potions. bottles, potions and stuff. We have our health stacks and our stamina markers. Now usually you'll use three by the rule book, but we just slide ours up and down with one. Um, and then we have our corpse tokens, which will be out here in the map. And then we have our die. And now Anna will show you how to set the game up with all the different cards. We'll start with the zombie deck, and here's the cards that have the base. The B down there, you take those 10 cards. And then. This one's level one. Level one, there's two and three. And you can customize the deck to however you want, but we'll play by the rule book for beginners. And for a two player game, it's six from the level two deck. And these are shuffled prior. And then five from the level three deck. And then you take all these cards and shuffle them into a 21 card deck. And that's your zombie card deck. And the rest of them can go to the box. Yep. <clears throat> and then we're going to take. Tim pre previously shuffled these so we don't have to shuffle them. Um, you're going to take two hallway setup cards. The rest go back in the box. You're going to each get an item card and the rest go over here for a drawing at a later point. And we can look at the item. You can look at the item. I got a skateboard. I got lab notes. Wow. And then. Um, you pick one exit card and that stays in the exit zone. You pick one lab card that stays in the lab zone. No, leave those in the lab. Next. Sorry, jeez. And then you put your door. <laughs> we'll put the lab. And then can you hand me that one? And then you put the fire door. And then you take four zombies from the pool and put four at the exit and four in the lab. And here's your student bodies deck. Each player gets five cards. And you can look at them. You can look at them, but I'm not looking at them now because i got more stuff to set up. Then you take the number of antidotes, I mean number of players, and add that many antidotes. To take the rest, antidotes, however you want to say it. Antidote. Antidote. <laughs> What'd you get infected with? I got infected with a dote. Now I need that antidote. And then all the <laughs> other ones, you flip over, and then you, you need add. To flip those in. Well, no. You add four more to make six. I think you add an additional one for a fifth player, and then you shuffle them all up. Stop watching, Tim. I'm not watching. I don't remember where I put things. Tim will follow. 
Because I'm a cheetah. Not really. I lost them as soon as you started moving them. Okay. So then you stack those and put those in the lab for later. And then each player gets five health tokens and then we do the one stamina like I said. And you put those over your health. You want to do that on yours? Oh, no. And then each player takes their character and put them on a start thing. And then we set up the hallway. And this, you follow where the arrow goes. And it looks like we get one. There, there, there. No, here, you're right. And then. Two corpse tokens. Whoops, I've seen them. Okay. I guess we wait to put the thing. Can you get the zombies out? How many zombies? One right here and one right here. And then this hallway set up. And the zombies you pick don't have any special statistics. You can just put them wherever. They all we move the same. We put one right here. One right here. And then one right here. Put a corpse oh, I see here. How it works. Oh, I will wait and I will show a you. A corpse here. And, and a zombie here and a zombie here. Nope. Right here. Oh, yep. So there's these little arrows right here. And then there's the arrows right here. So basically you'll take whichever card you flip over first you can choose which way you want it to go and then the second card will just have to take the opposite and then eventually and then you'll have no you blindly do it oh you blindly do it you put them face down and then flip them yeah face down i was saying like if you flip this one you can choose no you can't choose mm -mm. oh it has to be the front mm -hmm. well start. like if i if when you set them up, you put one blindly here, one blindly here. Flip them over, that's this side. Flip that one over, that's that side. Okay, well, I learned just something new about setup. He learned everything new about setup, because he didn't do it. Last yes, time. I did not do it. I just played the game. So that's the setup. And then we start by whoever owns the game. So we'll say I own the game. No. And so I roll. I say we roll for it. And then you roll. The first person to get a bite is the first player. Ah, I got bit. You don't get to go again. So I am going to put my person here, and Tim gets to put his person somewhere. I'll put it over here. Oh. Those girls gotta stick together. And these are stacked <laughs> one on top of each other. Oh, well, excuse me. Yeah, things can stack Sub on top master. of Okay, so that is the setup of how you would do the Lab 101, you would do the exit, and you would do the main hall. And now we will skip over to how to play. Alright, so now we will start our how to play, uh, and we will simulate everything that will happen during the game, as such as uh, hitting zombies and zombies hitting you getting knocked down, standing up, stuff like that. And then I will also change myself into a zombie later um, and show you how that goes about uh, being a zombie in the game. So Anna goes first. I'm now going to put my zombie, my player right here. And I will choose over here. And then zombies go first. So you pull a zombie. From the zombie deck. And I get to give two zombies and give them an action. So we really need the pool closer. Give me two zombies. One, two. And I'm gonna put one here, give it there, one here, go there. And that zombie turns. Okay. And that's all the regular zombies. Can you put these back in the... Yes. Okay. And then I am going to use a card. It says bash an adjacent enemy, and that gives, you, I use one stamina, so I bash him, he has one life, they all have one life, so he's gone. I'm going to use one stamina to walk, 
And then I'm going to use another stamina to go into this space right here. And he automatically attacks me because <clears throat> I walked into an adjacent space. And to clarify, you can move through these. It takes two movement, two, two stamina. Movements, unless you have a card that says otherwise. Yes. And I am knocked down. Um, but I'm also going to play this payback. If you are adjacent to an enemy that attacked you this turn, bash the enemy that attacked you. So I killed him, but I'm knocked down. So that was my turns. And Tim, you at the end of your turn... You can discard and draw, and then... Yes, and everyone can draw back up to six, but I didn't use anything against her. Right. So I'm still at six, so I do not need to draw. So I redraw. Or, I mean five. I'm sorry. I set five. my stamina back, and if I used an item... I don't ready it yet. You just do that at the beginning of your turn. So it's Tim's turn. So now I will pull a zombie card, and it looks like I give... I'll put a zombie into play and give, oh, two zombies into play and give them an action. So each one that I put in play will get an action. Where are we just currently? Right here? Mm -hmm. Okay, so. Hmm. We don't wonder where I should put zombies. How about the two guys you knocked out are going to come back? One. Okay. We're on the same space as me. Can they go there? No, because they don't have... Fine. He'll just come out of the door. He'll come out of the door and he'll move one. But he can attack me. From there? Oh yeah, because you're in the space. So my second, my at my one action with him will be to attack you. And he bites you. Oh. Well, he automatically bites me. Oh, because you're because I'm not vulnerable. Down. Yes. So no, but he didn't have to roll that. Yeah, she was vulnerable. I did forget. Okay. And then... It's Tim's turn. Yeah, well, hold on. it was the zombies. Hold on. An attack that would bash, bite, or knock you down, defend the attack, and then you may move up, move one, or stand up. So I don't take the damage, actually, and I stand up. Yes. And it's better to do it the way that we do it. We go ahead and do all the actions and have us laying down or whatever we need to be, and then play our action card to reverse it so that there's no confusion between, in between everything and what happens and what doesn't happen. <coughs> Um, uh, just to be funny, I don't know how this is going to work. Okay, so I'm going to use an action card, uh, and it is, can, dead can hear, and what it does is it moves a corpse token from the board and puts a zombie in that zone. So I'll uh, play that, it costs me no stamina to play it. I'll remove this corpse token. Why? Because, because you can't put a zombie where I am. Oh man. You're just blocking everything with the rule book. Unoccupied, do you see that? I just don't read the text. <laughs> okay, fine. Um, I'm gonna ignore I don't need to. I will just use my three stamina and move. One, two, three. Now the reason why he did that and not move here is because he would have gotten attacked. Yep. So. So I moved over one and up two. Did you redraw? I did not even play a card. Okay. So to now it's my turn. I ready items. I don't have anything to ready. Oh, I did. I could draw because I played that thing during his turn. Yes. And then. I ready my items, I do the zombie card, and wow. All zombies get one action, and then I add one and give it an action. So, he will attack, you he will attack me first. You start with the closest and to I'm you, and I'm knocked down. Go Let me see what I, hmm, okay. So these guys will move to me. Move one, move one. Did you take your bite? Move one. Move one. No, I didn't have to take a bite because I stood up. Move one. Oh, that's right. Okay. And then I add a zombie. Can I have a zombie? Oh, I'm sorry. And give it an action. 
and then I use a stamina to stand up. What? Oh. And then I I would only assume this would work. Um, push an adjacent enemy one space and knock him down. So I push him and then he's knocked down, but he's actually knocked off the board. Um, and then I'm not going to use, I'm going to end my turn right here and I'm going to check a corpse. And I get an item. Woohoo! You have to check it, the corpse at the end of your turn. You have to end there. And I get trash can lid. Um, which allows me to rush one um, at any time and then defend an act, attack made against you I get to discard that for it so then that is <clears throat> my turn it's Tim's turn now so I'll pull the zombie card all zombies get one action so one of these guys is going to hit me first. So we'll say this one hits him first. Knocked down. Okay, so this one and automatically one. gets a bite. So that gives me this. This one would probably move toward you. That'll move up, that'll move up, that'll move to me. Okay, uh, this guy is the only one to attack me, so let me see if I have something that will. No, they both attacked you. I know, but he gave me the bite, so... I will do the payback as well as what you did, and he will go away. I did a bash with a payback. An enemy that attacked me this turn, I am able to bash them. So now, it's my turn, my turn. Mm -hmm. So stand up for one stamina. And then... I will move one stamina, and now I must fight him and him. They're going to attack. Take a bite. Now, if, this is an instance where you would, if you had a rush card, you'd want to use it. Yes. Because when you can rush, when you rush, you actually don't get attacked yep. when you move. But I did not have a rush card. So now. Missed. He missed. That was one movement, right? Mm-hmm. Two. So that'll take my last stamina. And you're attacked again. Yes. So I'm attacked again. And you're So bit. I get bit. Are you just trying to turn into a zombie? No. But now I will use my skateboard and move one <laughs> and get attacked again. Wait. That You misses. have to use an action for that. I have to use a stamina for this? Yeah. It doesn't say so. Yes, it does. Oh, stamina right there. I'm so confused because the stamina is usually in the corners, right there, is where it's usually at. I didn't see it right there on the card. So I will move back here, I do not get attacked. Um, okay. Okay. What Hold zombie card. All zombies get one, and then add one, give it an action. Okay, so... He's he, gonna attack Tim. Yes. Where's the dice? There. Miss. He goes... One, two, three. One, two, three. I'll go there. The reason he doesn't attack me is because he wasn't adjacent to me, and he only had one action. His one action was to move, so he was right. not able to hit me. He had if zombies action, move into an adjacent spot to you, they don't attack you. Yes. If you move into a spot adjacent to a zombie, they attack you. Yes, you are pulling aggro, basically. And then I am going to stay where I am, and I'm going to check this corpse. And it's empty. Oh. And... Backpack full of air. <laughs> oh, and I get to draw up. Because I did not. I didn't draw up. Now it's Tim's turn. Okay. Now I have three stamina. I will use that stamina to move two. One, two, and I'm ignoring that because I'm throwing a block card. 
In more what? Oh. Him attacking me. So basically he was going to attack me here, but I had a block card, which I was going to play anyway. So I went ahead and took my two and threw my block card. And now I am out here. So oh, I didn't add a zombie. I costed me one stamina. Go ahead and add mm -hmm. one. Do you want to put him here? Yeah. And it would have moved one. Okay. So here and then here? No. Or you want to do this? Yeah. Well, just okay. for sake of accident, we'll just put him here. Okay. Because she forgot to put one out and give right it one here. action. I was here, and then I moved two. Oh. Yeah. One, two. No, you're right. I was here. Because I moved here, blocked them, and then moved one more. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um... And now I'll use my last two stamina. And that's it. And I'll draw a card. So I'm back to five. Well, I got myself in kind of a predicament here. Yeah. Um. Oh, See, I play to get to the lab and just <laughs> grab the antidote and go. Anna's over here exploring the whole school. <laughs> I need to save that letter from John. John is so cute. What are you talking about? When you pass notes in school. She's over here at the locker getting the note out of the locker. <laughs> She's gonna die. <laughs> okay, now zombies. But you do have full health, and I only have two. Add one, give it, and any other zombie spawn this turn two action. So, okay, zombie, sure. add one, one, Boo. and miss. And then okay. I'm going to ignore all obstacles this turn while moving. And then I'm going to gain a stamina. And I am going to use my ability here and rush one. And then I'm going to move, that was one. Then I'm going to move four. And then that he attacks. Miss. He attacks. Huh? He attacks as well. There's two oh. guys there and adjacent. So you move there. You missed one. Actually, I'm not going to move four. I take that one back. Okay, well, you still need to. Okay. And I'm knocked down. And I'm going to stand back up. Stand up. And I'm going to move one. You'll be attacked. Take and bite. bite. Chomp, chomp. So I do take the bite, and then I'm going to check this corpse, and I get an item. Woohoo! Come on, weapon! Yay! <laughs> your cheering doesn't sound very convincing. No. Yay! <laughs> I'm going to push people. I want to bash people. You get a mop. And then I draw back up. Yeah, but push up to a three adjacents. You push these two right now. Well, no, you push that. It's adjacent. But that ends my turn, so now it's Tim's turn. We'll do... You ready item? Oh. It's off the camera, but he flipped his card around. I think, can you see mine? Yeah. Yeah, this is not ready. This is ready. You can only carry one weapon, by the way. You can put, you can have others in your backpack. At the beginning of the turn, when you ready your items, you can rearrange whatever you want out. All zombies get one action. So she's gonna come to me, evil lunch lady. Okay, he's gonna attack me, which I should have done that first. Bite. Let me see if I have anything to reverse it. No, wait up. I will take the bite. Uh, then he attacks you. You have a bite. Do you have anything to reverse it? Um, oh, I get a bite? Yeah, right here. Oops. Let me see. And they're gonna move. She's gonna move. He's gonna move. Okay, what did you... Did you move someone toward me? No, you were adjacent right here. Okay. All of them got one uh, 
action. And it bit me? Yes. Nope. Okay. Now I will play a move four card. That's going to take two of my stamina, which I have one left after that. So one, two, we're going to open up the laboratory, and now we are going to shift over to the lab and show you guys how to do the setup when you open the door. All right, now we're going to show you guys how to set up lab 101. Uh, I already took the card off and uh, was looking at it, and it looks like... Oh, right here, it's got an icon for 5th. We will not use that. That's for 5th player on this side. Right there it says 5th in red. So what you'll do is you'll line this card up with these right here. My girl quit doing backflips. And we will go ahead and get all the tokens, uh, antidote tokens, as soon as I find out where Anna has put them. Um. And we will place them here on the map. They're right in front of you. Put one there, one there, one there. I didn't even see them there. Wish we had another camera. <laughs> Behind the scenes. <laughs> the Geek Gaming Review Group. Maybe you can find out what that means. Just let us know. Because it was kind of funny what you didn't see. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it's not very good friendly. <laughs> Um, oh, can I have another card? I didn't draw up earlier. Oh, never mind. I don't have to draw up. I had to use that move four. Uh, so I still have two left over. Uh, oh. Obstacles. Obstacle course. Oh, this is a sucky one. Can I have you put some of the corpse markers on here? I need one here. And one here. One here, one here? Yep. The only reason I do that was a little piece of paper. <laughs> this is kind of nice, a little reference. Jeez. I feel like that took forever. And then, where's the back of the obstacle right here? Oh, yes, back of the obstacle will get. You may flip the obstacle over. Right? And they will exit this way. So it will come out and have to go this way. Gotcha. So the antidote's probably over here. Ooh, this is kind of opposite of what was going on when me and you played last time. Mm -hmm. Whatever that was. Okay, so I still have two movement left, but seeming that I moved into this hexagon and this guy was waiting there, uh, he will attack me. He misses. I will move one. He's going to attack me again because I aggravated him. He will bite me. <gasps> Unless I can negate this. I cannot. Okay. So, I am now dead. So I take my girl off. Put my zombie self on. And I am now knocked down. So, trying to make it all the way through there did not work. And now, I will flip my card over. And now I have two health tokens. And that is all. So, there I am. I am now dead. And now, I can simulate how a zombie works. It's your turn. My, my stuff ends, I discard all of these. And then... Because I died. I flip over the zombies. Each zombie gets two actions, so... That includes me. Tim's knocked over, so he doesn't get an action. I don't? No. Every other zombie gets two actions. Oh, stand up, move. Okay. Stand up and move. And then I need the dice. I'm about to die right here. The die is right here. There's your die. Right above your player card. Okay. This one attacks. Bite. I defend it. I throw that away. Oh, and I'm sorry, guys. Where she's at is down here. I am down there. And then he attacks again, and I'm knocked down. So that means he attacks me, 
I bite, bite, and then this one comes here, attacks me, and bite, and now I'm a smart zombie. And since there's two players, game's over. And we both lose. Yes. Or we both win. So we will go ahead and simulate what would happen if you found an antidote. So let's go ahead and skip well, on over to that and show you guys how that works. All right, so to simulate how you would pick up an antidote, we're going to pretend that these were already extinguished and used and gone, which actually that was a good one, so it wouldn't be gone. Uh, but anyways, um, say my player was here, one of my actions, I would have to use stamina to get this. No, at the end of the turn. Oh, at the end of the turn. Is it a free you know, action? It's, yeah, it's a free action at the end of oh, your okay. turn. You'd have to end on that space. Yes, and you still have to be alive also to get the antidote. So let me flip my card back over just to kind of show. Let's just pretend I'm dead up to here. And I also, if you get anything other than an <laughs> antidote on the side of the board right here, can you see this? They can't see this. But they can see this. These. Yeah, those things. But on the side of the board, it tells you what to do. Yes, so, so if you got any of these, um, the red one is player gains one health. So that's a good one. The blue uh, one. Blue with the crossbones, or purple, is that's player purple. loses one health. The pink and with an X is player discards their hand. And blue. There's a blue one, and that one is players are knocked down. And then there is also a yellow one with a plus one stamina, and it says player gains one stamina at the end of this yep. turn. And then the yellow one that says antidote is the antidote you are cured. So you will take that, and you will take it, put it on your player card, and then you will try to get all the way down to the exit. Now, we obviously didn't make it that far. We ended up dying off. So let's go ahead, and we're going to show you how the exit works when you hit the door. And it's basically going to work just like the Lab 101 would. All right, so now I'm going to show you guys how to uh, do the exit, which is going to be just like the Lab 101. What we will do is I have the antidote, so we will pretend that that's where I was at when I ended, and I have one health. We're going to pretend I have all my health just because. Okay, so what we'll do is I open the door. That's a free action at the end of my last turn. We'll say that that's what happened. And then we have these four saved right here. Now you're going to look at this card, and you're going to see the exit door, so which are up here, and then you will place everything that is needed. There's a zombie in this door, a zombie next to the door, a zombie in that area, and a zombie here. And then there's also two obstacles. And usually when you're at this end, you can just take the obstacles and just kind of put them in here. So now it would take me two actions to go through there. Um, so let's go, let's say I have three stamina as soon as I find my marker. Okay, so I have three stamina. And uh, I want to move through the door. So I'll use two stamina there, and then one stamina. And then that's going to trigger, oh, I'm sorry. Let me draw a zombie card and see what the zombies do first. All zombies get one action. Okay, so they're going to move towards me, move towards me, move towards me, move towards me. Which, yeah, that would be right. Uh, then I will enter one zombie and have them get one action. So let's just say my my enemy, my opponent, is back here still. So I'll just spawn one in and they move one. Which is off the board and not happening here. So we don't have to worry about it. Because I'm not going to put more zombies in my way to get to the exit. So then I will get my action cards. And see what I can do because I should have looked at that first. Alright, so I'm gonna rush two. So two, because it costs two to get there, but now I don't have to fight against that creature because I rush two. And the rush two cost me one stamina, so we'll count down one stamina. So I have two stamina left. 
and I will use one stamina to uh, bash that zombie. So now I still have one stamina, and I happen to have a rush one. So rush one costs me zero stamina, so I go there, no one attacks me. I have another rush, has zero stamina. I get to go here, and then I have another one that doesn't cost me stamina, but I gain two gain a stamina or a health. So let's say I gain one stamina. I'm gonna hit this exit, and now that zombie's going to attack me. And he misses, and that's the end of my turn, and then my opponent would go. Um, so they would draw a zombie. Um, it's have a zombie enter and give it two actions. So let's say they spawn a zombie right here because they really don't want me to get through there. And I only had So let's say they roll the dice twice because the zombie gets two actions. Well, I get knocked down. Let's see if I have anything that will negate that. Well, I guess I should have drawn up for my opponent's turn. And I do. I'll play the head fake, and what that will do is Defend the attack. The next time you are bashed or bitten this turn, you may defend that attack also. So now... Okay, so defend the attack. And now they miss. And it's... Now it's my turn after the zombies go. I have my stamina and I go through the door and that would be how I would win. I would have to have the antidote. Now, to win, when you turn into a zombie, you would have to kill off the other zombie and then you can claim victory that way, but the rule book says that that would only be a tie. So, uh, that is the end of how to play tutorial. Uh, the, I think we covered everything as far as antidotes and how to move and how the zombies move uh, and stuff like that. And you can obviously make the game even more difficult by using more level three zombie cards. Um, so now we will go ahead and uh, tell you our thoughts about student bodies. Alright guys, so our thoughts on uh, student bodies by Smirk and Dagger and Angry Duck Games. Uh, I think this game is really awesome. I actually turned into a zombie trying to get Anna um, killed off so that the game would end and uh, I would have claimed victory if I had killed her off. I but, made it out. But she did make it out. She I, actually I pushed through what, like I was 15, going to. like 15 regular zombies, and then me. Um, I mean, and I, I did everything that I could. Uh, I was really restricted because I didn't have a whole lot of uh, zombie actions I could have taken on my cards, which and two uh, it player. feels. Go ahead, sorry, I interrupted. Oh, that's fine. Uh, it feels more like I'm moving like a zombie because I was so slow. Um, Obviously, the new zombies and all these new shows are running, but mostly I don't see how you're running if you have a broken ankle and your bone marrow is weakened, so I feel more of a zombie in this game. Um, not that I know the whole anatomy of zombies, but um, that is one of them. They have weaker bones, so they, they, that's why they're always broken and breaking and everything else. Okay. Um, um, the, uh... We did play it two player. We haven't played it multiple player other than, well, two player is multiple player, but more than yeah. two. Um, so I can see how the game would change a lot because at the point that there are two people um, making zombie actions, because once he's turned into a zombie, there's only one person making zombie actions, and obviously it's me, so I'm kind of yeah. at but the advantage. But if they're near me, they're attacking, so it's not like I can run from them if, they, if it's fair that they attack me, but... If there's more people and more zombie movement, it might hurt a little bit more. And I got pretty close to dying. I had one health left, and then I popped a card that I got another one, and then I got bit again, so I was down to one by the end of the game. But um, but it's it's a lot of fun, even two player. It's something that I think that we reach for from our shelf often. And I told Tim it was kind of cool that we got a review copy because we probably, if we would have played it at Gen Con, we would have bought it. <laughs> so yeah, we probably would have bought this game either way. But um, we're, I, we're big Smirk and Dagger fans. I've um, talked to Kurt a lot over the years. They used to do the Run for Your Life Candyman. And, like, the rule book I read front to cover, 
um, front page to, to cover to cover. That's what it's called, cover to cover. <laughs> I read the entire rule book, and the rule book had a lot of smirk and dagger humor um, that I know that the guys use um, in their games. So, like, the flavor text, um, like, all the players are, um, well, all the zombies are popular people, and then you no. are, like, the outcast, and then the flavor text at the bottom of the people, like, I was the girl, and it said she was a wallflower who just wanted to be noticed until now, and, like, he played the nerd guy who just wanted to, who could well, roll, roll there, a dice. There's actually too many of those, so you have to specify that he's the one with the mop. Yeah, the mop, and his said something about he... He only combated with a D20 until, until now. now. Yeah, like, they all have an until now uh, flavor text. And so my favorite one was that the, the one girl. character... No, the one character, he's like, you know, he always wanted to be known as the biggest brain oh, yeah. until, until now. now. And then the <laughs> goth girl said the goth girl who had a death wish, who always had a death wish until now. So, like, their flavor text is really good in the rule book. Um, um, lots of... Um, humor and lots of uh, tongue-in-cheek things like basically like we'll clarify yeah. this my you anyone who is not you is your enemy so like they keep going over and over again that basically you it is not a co-op game do not play friendly try to kill each other <laughs> like that's yeah. the humor is in there when i found out because at first i was like oh is this co-op and then she's like no it's not co-op at all it's completely the opposite of that I was like, oh, well, finally, a game that I can just completely just do whatever I want to yeah. try and destroy the other person, and I, I thought I had a lot of fun with it. And the art is very gruesome, but <laughs> it's very funny, like, you know, like, pencil stabbed at the eye. Yeah, it's kind of <laughs> cartoony, but gory. I, can, I can see gory at the same time. Kind of like um, the boondocks. What are you talking about? Not the boondocks. The cartoon? Happy Tree Friends is more like it. It looks like a little kids show, but it's very violent. Um, if you guys have tried that, let's check that out. That's on YouTube everywhere, and now on Netflix for some reason. And I feel like the idea of the high school is really um, unique for a zombie game. Yeah, it's and it says no guns. Um, not in a hospital. And it doesn't matter if you have guns, really, because I mean it's kind of the point because basically you are bitten. Like, you have already been bitten. You have to go get your antidote, and then you have to get out. And then every once you're out, you lock the doors behind you, and everyone else dies. Yeah, so, I, thought, I thought it would be really cool if certain cards that came out, like the big lunch lady, if her zombie triggered individually, and she had, like, a special statistic table. But in that, you would have to equal it out to the players as well as giving them more powerful cards that would... Well, but the zombie that, pool, like, you pull any zombie from the zombie pool, so it'd be kind of hard because if she yeah. was already pulled. Well, yeah, that's what I'm just saying, like... Pulled from the pool. Maybe an expansion later, they're going to give each person their own statistics and everything. Maybe. That'd be kind of cool. Just to making it more... I don't know even if, more... I think Cutthroat Caverns has some um, expansions, but I don't think Smirk and Dagger is really all that big on expansions, but... Well, if you do, there's an idea. <laughs> uh, I think Cutthroat Cavern says. You guys that. didn't do any expansions until now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't know. If, I don't think Run for Your Life, and I don't think Shooting Ladders has them. Well, they might have some promo cards. Like I don't know. I'm a big duper, fan of their games. Like, like double stuffed Oreo gun or whatever it is. And Kurt is super nice. If you ever get a chance to talk to him, I made a suggestion a long time ago because if you go to their Run for Your Life Candyman tournament. You actually get a gingerbread man if you get a ticket. So, so they usually have extras, but over the last few years, it's gotten way out of hand popular. Not out of hand; it's in hand, but it's very popular. Um, but I went a couple years ago, and um, when we used to play in the hallways over by the glass doors and stuff, and uh, you have to holler if you if you get someone's Candyman head, you have to stand on the Where chair. Are you going with this? I'm telling you. <laughs> you have to stand on the chair and you say, Behold, I hold the head of my enemy. And the whole crowd, like everyone playing the tables, goes, Ooh, ooh, ooh. So, like, they have really funny names for their candy man. And I told them that we need, they need to have, like, a liquoritis or something like that. Like, Leonidas. Like, li <laughs> licorice. Or, like, not liquor. But, like, licorice or something like that. And Kurt thought it was funny, but he didn't use it for his games. 
Sorry, Kurt. <laughs> Sorry, Anna, I guess. I don't know. But anyways, yeah, it was just funny. the one with the power. Yeah, he was like, email it to me. And I was like, okay. But I don't, I think I emailed it to him. But anyways, it was, they're a lot of fun. Um, we've been working the last couple years, so we haven't been able to go. I'd really like him near to the tournament one of these years. Um, anything else? It's a good game. I would suggest you to get it for your family. Um, it's a lot of fun, a lot of tongue-in-cheek. Um. It's not for the lighthearted. It's kind of not sadistic, but it's, yeah, it's a little sarcastic. I would say if you are weary about your children playing certain types of games, I would have you should play it first and then expose it to them on your opinion. And if you're easily offended, you might want to say. Yeah, but I mean, it is that zombie theme, so most kids get it. Zombies are. But it's not. Them. It's not flavorless zombies like you know, like zombies the um, Twilight creation game, which we love, that is flavorless zombies. There's just zombies in a city. You have to try and get out. Yeah, this is a... This is flavorful zombies it's a, with character. It's kind of friendly zombies, but they're still trying to kill you. I mean, it's the cheerleader, so they're not but that you, friendly. But you also get to come back as a zombie if you die off, unless you're the last one in the game. And then if you're killed off as a zombie, then your corpse is left there and they can loot your body. Yeah. So, kind of. So you actually get to die twice. You can. You don't get to. You don't want to. Unless you want to. And yeah. then why aren't you playing? It was kind of exciting but, to beat you to the antidote and then get through the doors and then... That yes, was the I checked. Being okay, he checks one <laughs> potion. He gets the antidote. I check all potions and the last one I check is the antidote. Yeah. It was kind of crummy, but I won anyway, so whatever. Yeah, she did. Even with my... Smart Militia of army of zombies. And you're a <laughs> smart zombie. Get it. Apparently not smart enough. Apparently not, but... <laughs> you just had cards that were out actioning me and reacting. So, is Maybe. that all we have? That's all. That's all? Okay. This is a highly recommended game by us. We would have bought it if we didn't get a review copy. Um, yeah. So, I'm Tim. I'm Anna. And this is Geekto Game Review Group. And this is Student Bodies. Bodies by Smirking Dagger and Angry Duck Games.